Welcome all to the Winskill AFC Media Channel. Today we are joined with Mike McDonald, Stephen Fawcett and Dale Hooper, the two managers for the first team and the reserve team manager, player, coach. Uh, today we're going to be having a quick chat about what's been going on during the time that we haven't been able to play football, the restart of the league, um, also something to do with the merchandise. So we'll kick it off straight away. We'll dive in, in the deep end with the first team managers. Steve, Mike, um, we've had the decision recently uh, from the Wearside League. Uh, can you elaborate on it for us, please? Yeah, so I'll, I'll jump in there. Um, so I think, uh, so it's, it's been low and void. So, and I think that's the, the correct decision from, certainly from our point of view. Yeah. Um, because we were so, so far behind with games. There was no, there was no way it was going to get caught up. It would just interfere with next, next season for me. And uh, it'll allow us to get uh, a good prep for next year and really look forward to next season. Um, last season, the start of last season, which has been avoided, we, pre-season wasn't great because obviously the COVID regulations and things like that. So hopefully we won't have to fight on too much with regulations. Let's let's hope that they're kind of uh, on their way out and we can we can train more normally, if you know what I mean. So, but yeah, but I do understand some of the teams at the top of the table that were doing really well. Obviously they would be a bit aggrieved that they've started well and they haven't got the seed out. But from our point of view, we just think it's a, it's a correct thing to do. Restrictions on travel would have interfered with us, uh, you know, travelling away, and also for the teams visiting us. Um, it just it just seems the right thing to do. So, yeah, for me, that's that's what I feel. In the Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, passing it over to Dale. Uh, Dale, what's happening with the reserve team in the Cumberland County League? Uh, well, we've just been given a green light to start again. I think our first fixture is going to be sixth of April. So, obviously, hopefully start training again back into this month. And they've sort of scheduled it. They've changed all the league structures now. So, instead of us having to travel to Carlisle, work it and play, they, they, the White Haven teams are all in one league, work it in a spare, be a week to in one league. And then there's the Carlisle teams in a different league as well. So, yeah, we're going to get back to going. I think we've only actually played one league match, as it stands. So, we've got nearly a full set of fixtures to fit in like a short period of time. So by the sounds on it, we're going to be playing every Saturday and I have a Tuesday first or every week. Wow, so it's so, a good running for you, I, for your lads there. Uh. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, Steve, uh, what's going to be next for the first team? Um, well, like Mike says, obviously the, with the season being declared null and void, um, we're in a position really of... Um, we're still waiting for guidance from the FA. I think that's probably the first thing we should say. So, um, in terms of what can we do from a even from like a friendly side of things. So, I think what me and Mike would like to do is 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 get some friendly fixtures arranged that tides us over from, you know, at some point in April um, to a, a more typical end of season date, if you know what I mean. So probably you know sometime towards the end of May. Um, and then have a, a, a short spell off. We might, I say a short spell off. We might even just carry on training right through, um, and then again, you know, head into a, a, a more normal pre-season. Like Mike says, last last pre-season was uh, it was difficult, you know, with the, the sort of ever-changing situation that we were in, having the training groups of six. You know, it was just very disjointed and, and wasn't enjoyable to be honest. So. Um, I would agree with what Mike said in that, you know, I think it's the right calls being made. Um, if for no other reason, then it allows us to have a, a normal season going into uh, into this next one, which hopefully we will. From a from a training point of view, um, we're hoping that we can get going, you know, sort of first week in April. The lads are busy now doing their own stuff, you know, so getting out, putting their miles in on the roads, doing various, you know, bits and pieces, um, which is good. And, the, the, you know, they have really stuck at that um, in, you know, again, in difficult circumstances. So um, there's plenty going on. I just feel like we're getting towards a return. Um, we just need to, you know, see this final stretch out. And obviously all of that's um, dependent on the plans, you know, the, the whole COVID plan across the country, you know, 
going the way that we want it to. Yeah, absolutely. Hoping that the rollout's the best way that it can possibly be and we get back to football and life as, as normal. Um, passing yeah. back over to Dale, um, we know quite a lot about the first team through our sort of own media coverage and we're now starting to pick up the reserve team as well as part of the media coverage. Uh, can you give us a brief overview of the team, i.e. like who's playing, the age range of your team, um, and if there's anyone out there who fancies a goal, could they possibly join? Yeah, definitely. That's our main thing. I think we still need to recruit quite a lot. Uh, we're a very young team. Uh, most of our side, I think the range from about 16 to 20. You know, I think there's actually only maybe five of us now over the age of 25 in our whole squad. You know, we range from 16 to, well, myself, what's 36. And there's, we haven't really got that like, gap in the middle. You know, like your 25, 26 year olds. That's what we're really looking forward to. You know, that's what we want to bring in if we can do at the end of pre season. I think we're just going to use the rest of this season now just to give as many of the young lads as much experience as we possibly can and just sort of treat it more as a pre season league rather than a, you know, a full season. But we've got some promising young lads coming through. I mean, at the end of the day, for your point, you know, we're team is to bring people through for forcing Mike's side and there's certainly like likes of Bobby, Ethan, lads like that, they're really coming on and they'll be the ones who'll probably step up in maybe four or five years but you know I want to see like 21, 22 so Yeah I have been down to watch quite a few of the reserve games this year when our first team games haven't been been played and there has been some really good talent on show so it is a promising side that you've got coming up Dill um, yeah. Passing back over we've got a Mike uh, Mike um, what are we, are we saying about last season's sponsorships? Obviously, each player and each manager uh, had their own sponsor last year. Can you give us any more details about what's going to happen with that? Yeah, so obviously, with it being a short season, interrupted season, um, it's only fair that it carries on on, on, on to the next season. Um, I think it would be unfair to ask people uh, to dip again, um, you know, for various things. So, I mean, I know we've got a, a new strip. <laughs> Unfortunately, we haven't had much time to use it. So, you know what I mean? So, the kids' sponsors and things like that. So, yeah, so you just, you just basically carry on. I think that's it's only the only fair thing to do. Um, and I don't think there was much de- uh, debate on that. I think it was just universally accepted we'd do that. Um, but, yeah. Uh, do, you want to jump in straight there? You might be not. I was just going to say, how, like, how important the... the the, not just the player sponsors that we got, but there's various other companies and things that were that were done um, to really, you know, support the club. Um, it, it's it's not cheap, you know, playing in the East Side League. And this year we made a real conscious effort um, to up our game in that in that respect of you know raising the sponsorship money. So, like Mike said, people like places like the We Chief that sponsored the first team kit um, were extremely grateful for that. We had. Um, Fowler bro- Brothers, they won um, the ground name and rights, and we sold a lot of tickets to a lot of you know local companies for um, for player sponsorships that went into the hat for that you know for that draw. Uh, we had people like M and I Travel, Hungry Caterpillar, the Cumberland Building Society. There's loads more that you know that I could mention. They're just the ones that sort of spring to the top of my mind, if you know what I mean. But it's um, it's absolutely the right thing that we do that we carry all of those player sponsorships on into next year. Um, we are going to be looking to do some more on that. Um, we didn't really get off the ground this year with selling the advertising boards that are on the ground. Um, we've sold a couple, but unfortunately they weren't able to be produced because of everything that was going on with, with COVID. So we sort of took the decision to to hold off on, on doing them and we'll get them done for this year. Um but we've got more to come. Yeah, it'd be good to add to them, wouldn't it? The, the advertising yeah, board, absolutely. somewhere where we can we can add um, without you know interfering with what went on last year. Um, we can definitely, yeah. obviously, get yeah. some uh, information on them if anybody yeah. would like to do that. We're going to look to do some match day stuff as well, uh, Panda. So you know, sort of your typical. <laughs> Um, whether it be like a match day sponsorship package uh, or a man of the match type thing, um, it's all it's all the sort of stuff that you know. There's lots of other teams in our league that do that as, as standard. So it's just really bringing the club up to speed with you know with those types of things where we can 
really help our local businesses. And I know we're going to talk in a bit about what's happening with the social media side of things and website and stuff like that. But um, it's not just about us, you know, sort of being supported by the companies. It's as much about, well, what can we do for them? You know, that's why we're trying to grow our social media. We're trying to grow what we do with things like this, you know, all the good stuff that yourself and Dave are doing. Um, it's so that companies can actually get some benefit back from that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on the side of um, the media, me and uh, Dave, or David Edge Photography, um, who's kindly become our club uh, photographer, uh, we're going to start doing recordings of live games and also putting the commentary over the top. This won't just be for the first team, this will also be for the reserve team as well. Um, we'll also be doing little player interviews, one-to-ones. Also keep an eye out on the Twitter, the Facebook, uh, and the Instagram for uh, Atom's teammates, which uh, returns from last year. We didn't get to quite complete it from last year, including the two guys that you see on the le- my, well, my left. Um, and also we'll be delving into the reserve team, getting to uh, know the reserve team a little bit more uh, and uh, creating the player profiles that will definitely be going up on the website. So you can, if you're interested, you can learn a lot more about our players and also uh, the player sponsorships will be linked in there. So we'll be able to uh, support the business through that way as well. Uh, Dale, um, is there any way that the reserves are going to help uh, delve in, into the community and possibly grab some sponsorships up as well? Yeah, yeah, certainly something we can look into. Definitely. Uh, I think because B's come on board now with us to like help run it as well. And he's got like contacts over in Keswick and different contacts to myself. So obviously I work in the plumbing trade as well. So there's a lot of lads coming to our work. He'll probably be up for play sponsorship and things like that. So it's certainly something we will look into and be able to develop a lot more. Everything to help the club grow. Uh, just a quick announcement before we do cap this video off. Um, very soon we'll be starting a, well not very soon, <laughs> denied, but uh, we'll be doing a live broadcast, myself and Dave, uh, of the replay of the last home fixture for the Windscale team, the first team, uh, where we played at Richmond. I won't spoil the score because, well, you might know it, but if not, then you can find out by watching it. Also, there'll be the addition of live commentary over the top. So if you feel like you've got nothing to do of a night, well, it's our stuff, so of course you can come and watch. Uh, myself and Dave will be live. Uh, the Details will be posted on all the social media pages. And also a word on the merchandise as well. Um, we've delved into the into the merchandise world a little bit. And we've uh, started to draw up some ideas as well. So we've got some pin badges, mugs, drawstring bra- uh, bags and umbrellas. I do have a picture of them if, it, if my uh, camera will let me. There's your drawstring bag and your umbrella as well. So, uh, well, that'll be bad luck, that picture. Please don't open them, brother, and doors. <laughs> I've just noticed that. Uh, they'll be going live on the website uh, in the next couple of weeks. So, if you, uh, And also, the club website, which is Pro Direct Soccer's website, uh, dedicated to us, um, all the way to uh, the first team stuff. So, this own uh, little, uh, I was going to say a polo shirt there, uh, the zip up jumper and the one that forces rock and now the um, forces on a stand up and gears a little twirl. Just, just the standard the T-shirts. There's, there's no modelling going on here, Panda. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, so they'll all be available on their website as well as a replica uh, of the first team home kit. Um, but yeah, apart from that, we have pretty much covered everything. Make, yeah, make sure to keep an eye on all the social media channels for more uploads in the future. And for now, Mike, Fossey and Dale, thank you for joining me. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Nice one. Nice one.